Have you ever walked out of a particularly contentious team discussion thinking to yourself, well, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one? Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Davey, and I'm here to tell you that agreeing to disagree is like agreeing to leave a giant open wound in your relationship not healthy. <laughs> and I'm going to share an alternative. The alternative to agreeing to disagree, which like, let's just admit, when you agree to disagree, what you're saying is, I'm agreeing to be passive aggressive about this <laughs> for the next few months. Or I'm agreeing that I'm going to sabotage your project in hopes that at some point I'll be able to say, I told you so. That's what we're really saying when we say agree to disagree. At the very least, we're saying, oh, okay, so we'll agree that you're going to go it on your own and you're not going to get any of my help. So the alternative to agreeing to disagree is to disagree and then commit. Disagree and commit comes from Amazon's 16 leadership principles, and it's one of my favorites. So I want to take you through the steps of what to do when you do disagree, but you're ready to commit. So the first one is to acknowledge that, to actually say out loud, because of this risk or this thing we haven't considered or these stakeholders, I you know, really wish we were going in a different direction and I am choosing to commit to this decision. You have me all in to make sure that this is successful. That's a really positive thing to signal. You don't, you don't want to downplay your dissent. That's a good thing. But you do want to say very openly uh, and clearly that you are going to commit to making this successful. Okay, the second thing you want to do is you want to explicitly acknowledge what it means that you are committing. So you can say, all right, um, I'm committing to this decision. And so what that's going to mean for me is I have to delay this project by three months. I have to really speed up the project plan on this other project that we're reprioritizing. And I have to share that with my team. Okay, got it. Anything else that you need me to do uh, to really get behind this decision? They might say some things and it'll be helpful. Third, it is okay, it, it's good in this situation to say what you need in order to be fully committed to this decision. So you might say something like, I need you to come with me to my team meeting to help explain why we're deprioritizing this project. Or I need you to find something we can redeploy these two team members on until we ramp back up that project. It's completely okay to say, hey, we're a team here and I'm going to you know, take a hit to be able to commit fully to this decision. Here's what I need to make that work. And finally, and this is kind of the most important step, get your head around what it means to be committing and what you would do, how you would behave if you did believe because it's amazing as humans, we can behave first and believe later. That's the power of cognitive dissonance. So if that's the case, just say, okay, if I really believed that this was the right new prioritization, what would I be doing? And you might think, well, I'd be spending some time this weekend before my team meeting, get, getting my head around you know, what we have to do differently to make this project go faster whatever it is. And then you'll see that you can behave in a way and then start to believe in it later. So agree to disagree. Oh, it's just a terrible, terrible habit on teams. I think we can reserve agree to disagree for what's the best flavor of gelato or who made the best Batman. Other than that, we don't want to use agree to disagree for almost anything. Instead, disagree and commit. I'm Dr. Leanne Davey here with just some quick tips on how to get the team that you deserve.